How to classify weevils. Kingdom, Animalia. Phylum, Arthropoda. Class, Insecta. Order, Coleoptera. Infraorder, Cucuiformia. Superfamily, Cuculionia. Dad? Yes, son? What's a weevil? Hello everyone, my name is Miss Reese Bowton. As you can see, it's a beautiful evening and I've decided to light my chimney. Unfortunately, there are some little bugs that keep eating all of the wood that, we, that I use for my chimney. And the wonderful poet, Martin Harvey, has written a poem all about those creatures. They're called weevils. And today, I'm going to read you that poem. So, the weevil. Of all the little bugs and beasts, the good, the bad, the evil. My undeniable favourite is the timber boring weevil. The weevil is, very, is a curious beast. He's brown and very small. He lives inside the cracks between the floorboards and the hall. He loves to eat, engorge himself, and for the reason, that's not good. Is my little friend the, re the weevil wants to eat nothing but wood. And wood is what your house is made of, mainly that and bricks. And weevils eat your floorboards up, among their many tricks. A single weevil, in just one day, can eat a ceiling joist. He loves the taste of rotting pine, so succulent and moist. And weevils lay their weevil eggs within the troughs they've dug, and eggs turn into larvae, which turn into weevil bugs. Now you and I know good from bad, as anybody should. And you and I would never think of, eaten, rot, of eating rotten wood. But if you were a weevil um, and you lived on weevil food, to leave a pile of joists untouched would be extremely rude. You'd have to get your weevil mates to kindly help you out and dig into the luscious wood with timber boring snouts. But why, you ask, of all the bugs, do you adore that thing? It's not as if he's favoured with a lovely shell or wings. And I reply in modest tones, you know he's not that evil. He's just a bug that lives on wood. My humble friend, the weevil. Looks like the weevil's been at it again, eating my uh, chimney wood. But what a beautiful poem by the wonderful Martin Harvey. I absolutely loved the vocabulary in there. I loved the word engorge. I thought that was brilliant. Luscious and curious. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And such a beautiful poem about a really beautiful creature. Now, this evening, I am going to teach you how to draw a weevil. Now, I'm no artist like I know Martin Harvey is. So I'm going to show you a simple step-by-step -step way to draw the little weevil. So we are going to start by drawing a big circle and that's for his body. Okay, so I like that in the middle of my page. Once I've done that, I'm then going to draw another smaller circle on top of it. So it looks like I'm drawing a little snowman. Now, once I've done that, I need to draw his head and I need to remember the weevil really likes eating wood, so he's got a really long snout. So I'm going to draw a really long snout on top, okay? Once I've done that, I need to draw the weevil's eyes, which are two big semicircles at the top, and I'm going to colour them in like so. I'll post up a photo um, at the end of this video if you can't see very clearly how to draw this beautiful creature. Now, I need to remember 
that a weevil is an insect and insects always have six legs. Now, I need to draw the first bit of his leg and most insects legs, I'll give you a tip, have three separate parts to them. So I'm going to draw a little leg at the end and um, have start coming out of his hurt shoulders looking like that and then the other one like that. The next two I'm going to have coming out of the middle of his body like that and then like that. One, two, three and then the last two legs. One, two, three and then one, two, three. Okay and that is just how you draw a simple weevil okay so i'm sure your drawings will probably look better than mine and i can't wait to see them thank you very much for listening bye like each and every single bug weevils are wonderful things yet unadorned like the butterfly it has no perfect wings it feeds on wood so dark and damp and hides within its bark. So hunt the hungry weevil in the forest, cold and dark. Right, today we're looking for the timber boring weevil. And in the woods, there's lots and lots of fallen trees and places where you might find weevils because you not only find them in houses eating away the timbers in the house you can also find them in the wild as well we're going to go and see if we can find some so we're here in eastern woods on the Wirral looking for weevils the weevils in the Wirral goodness me look at that old tree some of the reasons that these trees come down is that they're rotten. <clears throat> the insides get rotten out and dies and then it becomes unsafe. They either fall down or the forest ranger comes and cuts them down. But as a result there's plenty of firewood around and of course as far as weevils are concerned plenty of places to eat. Look at this. It looks like it's been eaten by something. Apparently they like to eat uh, rotting wood. They don't like treated timbers so much we find in a house unless they're untreated. And anything that's damp and rotten <coughs> and grotty they're likely to find weevils in. Let's carry on shall we? Let's see. Let's see if we can find some weevils here today. tree stump here but that's full of plenty of insects <clears throat> sort of place you can find all sorts of creepy crawlies look the entire inside has been eaten away by rot hundreds of years old and finally it all decays oh there's some of the wood chips that looks like the stuff that Miss Reese Bowden had. Right, look at all these old logs. As you can see, they're rotten in the middle. That's what happens when trees get damp. Look at the inside of that, completely rotten out. Weevils would have a great time in there. I'm surprised we can't see any. Let's carry on, shall we? See if we can find any more weevils in this great weevil wood on the Wirral. Well, here we are in Eastern Woods. It's a lovely evening and I think there's lots of weevils around. Can you see all this old decaying wood? They love that. All the rotten wood, they love to eat into that. That's what they live on. Beautiful woods here. Let's go and have a look around, see if we can find some. Oh, 
Oh, this looks like a good place to find weevils. Look at all this rotten wood inside these old trunks. We'll have a look, shall we? This big, big rotten log here. I'm sure there's lots of weevils poking about in here. Look at this old rotten wood. We'll have a look, shall we? Hmm. He was odd. Who? That bloke. That one who's just gone poking round here looking for weevils. Oh. Dad? Yes, son? What's a weevil? Huh? Oh, uh. We are. What? Weevils. Where? 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 Here. Weevils. What? They're here already? No, son. We are weevils. Weevils are us. Oh. Dad? Yes, son? Are we all weevils? Yes, son. Oh, right. Dad? Yes, son? Is that a weevil? No, son. That's a millipede. Oh. Dad? Dad? Yes, son? Is that a weevil? No, son. That's a slug. Oh. Dad! 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 Yes, son. Oh, is, is that a weevil? What? Oh, no, son. No, that's a bird. We don't like birds. Why, Dad? Birds eat weevils. What? Yes, a bird will eat you if you're not careful. What? Oh yes, them birds are nasty. They won't hesitate to gulp you down without even chewing. Dad? Yes, son? Can we go inside? All right, son. Come on. Hi everyone, um, as we're talking about weevils, I thought today I'd uh, make some weevil puppets that you can print and cut out and have your own fun with. Right, so I've done these in marker pen onto watercolour paper. I'm going to very, very quickly paint them. It won't take hours and hours like the other videos. This is going to be done very quickly and then we'll cut them out and I'll show you how to attach them to a pencil to make your very own weevil puppets. Now you could copy these and turn them into your other characters, if you, any other characters if you want. This is just an idea. But I've got a little weevil boy and his dad. Right, let's see how quickly we can get these painted up, shall we? Using my lovely watercolour paints again. Right, let's see. There, where's my brush? I'm going to have to turn it this way because the camera's at a funny angle at the moment. Now... Oh, need to clean this up a bit. Should have done that before we started. 
I use these little pallets over and over again. Very, very useful. I'll just put the mark down there, which helps keep it steady. Right, so here we go. Um, now I'm going to make up my own colours for these because I like bright colour things sometimes. Um, I'm going to give this chap a waistcoat, a bright green I think would be nice. So if we're going to do it bright green, let's start with a bit of a yellow background. Look at that, nice oh, that's a bit green. There we go. That'll shine through. So we're just going to leave a little bit of light, as I said, always helps give stuff depth. And hopefully before that dries, I should have mixed up my paint, and we can get some of this lovely rich deep green here. And just blend that in around the edge there. Yes, that's nice. So give him a nice greeny yellow coat. And I think we just dab in some this deep Windsor blue. Just to give a little bit of extra richness into the shadows of that. That'd be quite nice. There we go. And there's his little waistcoat. Um, now I'm also going to give this chap over here a little denim cap. So let's just go with the old Silurian blue, or however you pronounce it. Like that. I quite like that colour for his body actually, because sometimes insects have like a bluey green tinge to them, don't they? If you look at them. So let's just pop a bit of that in, give it a little bit more character. So as I said, I mix up my flesh tones with a bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of red. I'm going to pop that straight into everywhere we want. It might look a bit weird. I'll leave a little bit of light on the nose and the lip to let that come through. There we go. Easy. I think we'll do the little boy the same as well while we're here. I'm going to use this for his coat, for his body as well. There we go. And I'm going to deepen that up with a bit more yellow ochre and maybe burnt umber to make a bit of a browny colour there. And I think I'll use that as well for the tiny touch of indigo, just to deepen it. Let's give a bit of depth to the dad's face as well. There we go. That's pretty much it. I'm going to give that um, rich blue colour into the dad's coat. You can get all kinds of wheels, I'm sure. This may not be exactly accurate, but hey, we can do whatever we want in our own stories, can't we? Little podiums, or podia, however you should say that. The little rocks or bits of wood they're sat on. Simple bit of colouring in, isn't it? And extend that down here. Pretty neutral, really, because we're going to, you know, people to people's attention to be drawn to these. So it's just going to be cardboard, effectively. And there we go. Fill that in there. And 
there. And just for demonstration purposes, so you know this is your pencil. Yeah. And that shows you how to attach it to the pencil. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we can put away our paints and then we can cut our little friends out. Okay, so the next stage we need to cut these out. So what I think you should what you need to do, you'll have to um, print these out on the computer. Um, I've left them blank so that you can colour them any way you want. Use your favourite colours. Um, it's best if you can print onto a uh, the best quality paper you can, but any old paper will do, as long as you stick it, um, probably before you paint, if you stick it onto an old cornflakes packet, as they used to say in Blue Peter, um, or a piece of thin card, so if you can s print it out, stick it to thin card, paint it, and then stick it, uh, then, uh, then cut it out. I'll put the instructions on the sheet anyway, that you can download and print. Right, let's cut it out, shall we? And that, as I say, is that. So there we go. Our two little weevil friends. Just bend that lug back like that. Bend that lug back like that. We're ready to go. So the next step, and we're very nearly there, is to get a couple of pencils. So let's do that. Okay, let's see what I've got over here. So we get our pencil and our little piece of cardboard. I think first of all, if we turn it over like that, and then stick it down with a piece of sellotape to keep it in place. That's going to help everything else, isn't it? There we go. And maybe another piece going that way. Hang on there. And with these lugs, if you Bend them once and then bend them again. A little bit of sellotape around the back. Like that. Oops. And then that lug around the other way. A little bit of sellotape again. To keep that in place. Hello. I'm um, Bob. The Weevil. Hmm, no. I'm William the Weevil. That's better, isn't it? Alliteration. I'm William the Weevil. Oh no. See? Fun, isn't it? So, I'll do this one next, and then we'll... I'll make sure you what we can do with some of these. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have fun colouring and cutting out your own Weevil puppets. Bye. Oh, Dad? Yes, son? What's a weevil? Wow, look at this. Another great place for finding weevils, I expect. All that rotting, dry, wet wood. Well, I don't know whether we actually saw anything in the woods of the weevils today. The weevils of the Wirral Woods. I thought I saw something, but I'm not sure what it was. Anyway, maybe we'll have better luck tomorrow when we're looking for spiders. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Mrs. Rhys Bowton for that lovely piece of uh, video footage, reading the poem, and that was amazing how quick weevils tore through those chimney logs. Anyway, have a good evening, and look forward to seeing you tomorrow when we talk about the spider. Bye.